Tonight on Business Live, the visiting IMF team signals commitment to supporting Ghana's homegrown policies to stabilize the economy. Meanwhile, government is optimistic none of its social intervention programs will be affected. We will bring you excerpt of a document from the Finance Ministry that seeks to answer frequently asked questions on the engagement with the fund. Also in this bulletin, an economist with the University of Cape Coast Business School has hinted at the possibility of a reintroduction of some revenue measures as part of some conditionality under the IMF. Task measures in our budget which we have not been able to collect may be pressed. For example, property tax uh, may become a target area for uh, new revenue under an IMF program. Plus, Talo Ghana Limited, operator of the offshore Jubilee and 10 fields, awards five year contracts to Petrofac Ghana to support operations and maintenance activities on the FPSO Kwame Nkrumah. All these stories and more coming shortly. Do stay with us. Now, tonight, the visiting IMF team has signaled its intention to support Ghana's proposed homegrown economic program that will be put before to, uh, uh, during negotiations. Now, this was contained in a statement issued by the IMF as the team touched down in Accra for engagement with the government. Leader of the mission, Dr. Carlo Sradvet, added that based on the request by government, his outfit stands ready to assist the country restore economic stability and address the impact of Russia's war on Ukraine, as well as the lingering COVID-19 pandemic. But who exactly is Dr. Carlo Sradvet? As you can see on your screen, he is a division chief at the IMF and the 2020, that's the 22 and 11 months. He's an economist by profession with specialty in macroeconomics. And he also covers Benin, Burkina Faso, Ghana, and Togo when it comes to his you know, operations with the IMF. And he will be leading the IMF team to Ghana, and he also leads IMF's department on low-income country issues. It's very important that we understand who this gentleman is, because he's going to be really having negotiations between government of Ghana on whether or not we need an IMF program in terms of the analysis as well as the balance of you know, payment uh, services. But let's now bring you except of a document from the finance ministry that seeks to answer frequently asked questions on the engagement with the fund. And it reads, as you can see on your screen, for the very first question, does going to the IMF mean suspension of government programs and expenditures? Government says no that the member country, which is Ghana, has primary responsibility for selecting, designing and implementing policies to make the IMF supporter program successful. It also further you know, explains that this implies a government of Ghana's programs in line with its EDP will still go on as planned in so far as it is efficient and does not overburden public finances. So that's a condition there. Now, the very second question in the minds of various economists and, you know, the general public is whether or not government will terminate the e-levy because the IMF will give Ghana money. And in response, the finance ministry is categorical, saying a big no. The fact that the IMF lending to Ghana will be for balance of payment support that is shoring up Ghana's international reserves. It also adds, as you can see on the screen in the very second paragraph, that an IMF supported program is likely to encourage government to investigate the factors hindering the success of the e levy. That's including 
providing technical assistance if needed, and come out with strategies to improve that. Now, this question is a kind that so many of us have been asking when government made the hint, gave the hint of seeking IMF assistance, whether or not Ghana is facing an economic crisis. And this is how the Ministry of Finance puts its answer. It cites the war in you know, Ukraine by Russia together with COVID-19 as the two crises that government is currently faced with. According to the finance ministry, the whole world, including Ghana, is facing significant policy challenges, although each country is at a different stage. When it comes to Ghana, we are at the early stage, while countries like Sri Lanka have full-blown economic crisis. Currently, the country is having its populace line up for bags of milk, even that of fuel, to, you know, put in their very vehicles. This is how bad the situation there is. My government is saying the situation back home is very much under control. And to quote the IMF Managing Director, the Finance Ministry saying that we are facing a crisis on top of a crisis. That answers the question of whether or not Ghana is facing a crisis. Now, the very last question that, of course, the Finance Ministry has answered in this, in this graphic is whether or not I mean, what particular stage Ghana's economic crisis is in? Remember that the very earlier slide explained the reason why we're in a crisis. Now, government is saying that Ghana's economy is facing external shocks emanating from the scarring effect of COVID and the Russian-Ukraine war, resulting in high rising inflation, exchange rate depreciation, widening eurobond spreads, spreads of our sovereign bonds, and loss of investor confidence in the economy. So quite interesting, government is basically, you know, attributing current economic crisis to the war in Ukraine and COVID-19. Well, we're joined via Zoom by the Executive Director of the Center for Economics, Finance and Inequality Studies Service, Dr. Benjamin Amua, for his perspective on this matter. We're grateful, Dr. I could join us. We finally have an idea what government is looking for from the IMF in terms of funds. But what do you make of this entire engagement? Very much. The engagement is a good one. And uh, it is refreshing for us as a country because at least for now, we have the idea that government really, really want to tackle the issues that confront the management of the economy. So now what we need to look out for now is what is it that we are tabling to the IMF team by way of our attempt to get our economy back on track. So for the investor community, it is good news that at least we want to confront the situation and deal with it as it is now. Mm. Well, government is also looking forward to, you know, about $3 billion from the IMF. How feasible could this be, especially when engagements are yet to start tomorrow? It is highly feasible because from discussions and information so far, the IMF has about $70 billion available to support countries that are having similar challenges like Ghana. Again, the $3 billion that Ghana will be sourcing from the IMF is informed based on our current financing needs as a country. So if the discussions should go on well, and I hope it will, I believe that from which areas of our expenditure we want to relook and from the enhanced domestic program, how we want to prioritize some of our programs and some of our ideas and some of our initiative we believe strongly that the government over the entire period that we seek to go into the IMF program will succeed in mobilizing the $3 billion that it seeks to get from the IMF. But Doc, government is quite optimistic that this engagement with the IMF will not see specific programs being scrapped off. We do know that time in and time out, this is the 17th IMF program that we're headed for. But in all of these engagements, there are compromises. How do you weigh government's overconfidence, if we could use that term, regarding its homegrown policies and how the IMF would, in effect, accept these programs? Again, uh, that is a very slippery and tricky one to, to answer because uh, 
in most instances, when you look at the IMF policies, the IMF policies try to put into priority zones projects and initiatives that attempt to help the poor. Mm. So in this case, government policies or initiatives that are poor poor are most likely to get a pass from the IMF. On the other hand, other projects that from the IMF view can be put on hold because in terms of the ranking order, they are not so much of a high priority, then it is up to the government of Ghana to sift through its programs and initiative and then present programs that are in the interest of the poor or the marginalized mm. for which the IMF may consider to agree to. And then for some other programs that are big projects that do not necessarily impact directly on the poor, government may have to shelve it for now as it seeks to get the fiscal space with the support of the IMF in terms of managing its finances. Interesting. Well, government is looking at a three-year program, too long or too short, considering the current challenges facing the economy. If you ask me from what is happening around the globe and the fact that uh, international capital market is becoming tighter and tighter, I would say that a uh, minimum three years is okay because it is minimum three years, mm. meaning that government appreciate the fact that chances are that the project will have to go beyond three years. So a target of three years is okay. But then if government goes for the view that they would need to extend its association with the IMF for the purpose of revamping the economy, then it is also in order. Looking at the global financial situation, uh, three years to turn around the economy is a bit uh, ambitious. But then again, uh, there is nothing wrong to have such a target and then work towards it. So three years minimum is okay. Yet another target or expectation. Government is, you know, looking about, you know, around a minimum of seven months that, you know, is hoping to close negotiations with the IMF. How, how much of a target, how much measurable, how measurable is this target from your perspective? Again, I believe that this seven months has been informed by past IMF engagement, past from conditions that we have in the past and how we have engaged the IMF. So strongly, seven months is feasible because this is not the first time we are going to the IMF. I believe the template, the files, everything is more or less available. And the team that is also coming has prepared on exactly what to do. So seven months is a good target to work and to negotiate something out of the conditions that we find ourselves. So it is, of course, a good time and a good time framework to work with. Dr. Amua, this is the 17th time that Ghana is seeking IMF assistance. Are you convinced that this program, this time around, will bring some catalytic effects in terms of funding for Ghana? Absolutely. Uh, definitely something will come out of it. Again, it is not only the $3 billion. Aside the $3 billion, our association with the IMF to get out of this current situation will also open some doors for our fiscal space to have some more funds coming in from other third parties, commercial banks, other international funding agencies may also come in simply because the IMF is providing some level of supervision as far as our attempt to get out of difficulties concerned. So definitely, in addition to the three billion, there may be other funds that may come in to help the country out of this difficulty. All right, so finally, tomorrow begins engagement formally between the IMF and that of government negotiators. What particular expectations do you have as an economist ahead of this engagement? How do we get ourselves out of these uh, current difficulties? And again, we shouldn't forget that uh, this time around, vested interest groups have come out to make certain demands of government. We can talk about the Teachers Association, mm. you can talk about Utah, you can talk about TUC. In most instances, some of these labor unions are sacrificed when it comes to programs of this nature. But this time around, they, from the strategic point, have been a bit fast to table their demands ahead of this discussion. So we believe that the government will have to consider some of these interest groups and make sure that in its negotiations with IMF, some of these vested groups will have their interests protected. If not, uh, we may go through some difficult times in dealing with some of these vested labor 
unions. That notwithstanding, we believe strongly that something good will come out of it. And then from tomorrow, the engagement will go on well. But with this six months or seven months, we should be getting some turnaround in terms of support. Dr. Benjamin Namwa, we're grateful for your analysis on this. He's Executive Director of the Center for Economics, Finance and Inequality Studies, CEFIS. Well, still on government official engagement with the IMF, Dean of the University of Cape Coast Business School, Professor John Gachi, has revealed that there is a possibility of the reintroduction of some taxes as part of new revenue measures under an IMF program. According to him, the abolished road tolls as well as property tax, for instance, may be implemented as part of conditionalities under the fund. He spoke earlier on the marketplace. Discussion or the negotiation has not concluded, has not started. Uh, so I do not think that government will stick out its neck to say ABCD will not happen. Well, there's a statement uh, to that effect which came out today. It said E-Levy is still going to be charged. Well, I think uh, the, the release is in response to people who are calling on government to stop collecting the E-Levy because uh, government use the e-levy as uh, and then going to IMF as a mutually exclusive situation. Tell that if you choose IMF, then you will not charge e-levy. If you choose e-levy, then you will not go to IMF. I believe that is what uh, the public is calling for and the government decided to respond. But I, I don't think that is a huge issue. Uh, the main issue is that which program are we going to settle on for how many years and uh, what will be the effect uh, on the structures uh, within the economy, what would be the effect on labor, uh, what would be the effect on the people's uh, livelihood. I believe that is the key issue we are discussing. Of course, uh, we should also not be surprised that as part of the engagement to focus on enhancing revenue, the, the, toll, <laughs> the toll levies may, may return. Uh, no, 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 nobody can say that uh, for sure now. Uh, it, it is also possible that some of the task measures in our budget, which we have not been able to collect, may be pressed. For example, property tasks uh, may become a target area for uh, new revenue under an IMF program, especially when we ourselves have identified uh, property tax in our budget, but we are having it difficult to implement. And as always, Joy Business will give you up-to-date information regarding the engagement with the IMF as it begins official negotiations with government tomorrow. You're still watching Business Live. Still to come in the bulletin, Talo Ghana Limited, operator of the Offshore Jubilee and Ten Fields Awards, five-year contract to Petrofac Ghana to support operations and maintenance activities on the FPS of Kwame Nkrumah. We have details ahead. Do stay with us.
And those were your international summaries. Back home, Talo Ghana Limited, operator of the Offshore Jubilee and Ten Fields, has awarded a five-year contract to Petrofa Ghana to support operations and maintenance activities on the FPSO Kwame Nkrumah. Petrofac is the largest amongst a number of companies, all of which are either indigenous Ghanaian firms or local joint ventures, which will assume the operations and maintenance of the KNK FPOCO following the expiry of Talos contract with Modec Production Services Ghana, which ended on the 30th of June this year. Talo, as the field operator, remains accountable for the safe and reliable operations in Jubilee, including that of the Kwame Nkrumah FPSO. Meanwhile, the Managing Director of Talo Ghana, Rahul Deer, has been given the outlook for gas production in Ghana. The future on gas, the future potential, it makes the history set behold very, very small. So, um, uh, just purely on Jubilee, we see another 500 billion cubic feet of associated gas available after the completion of this 300 billion, as I said, roughly by the end of this year, to market for the benefit of, uh, of the, the nation and go through that Atwabo plant and then power both the existing power sector and also possibly the growing manufacturing sector over the coming years. On top of that, we have associated gas from 10, uh, which, will, which, which can complement and, and support this, uh, this growing um, economy here domestically in Ghana. Beyond this associated gas, through work we've done, uh, uh, subsurface work we've done, we see uh, over um, 1.5 to 2 trillion cubic feet, that's trillion, not billion, of non-associated gas in the reservoirs of Ten and Jubilee. This is gas that we do not currently have the right to drill into as part of our petroleum agreement, but is within the Ten and Jubilee reservoirs. So with the appropriate investment in the upstream, i.e. drilling these wells and ensuring we have the processing capacity, the, this gas can also join the Jubilee and Ten exported gas over the coming years to add on top of this uh, already existing export and the numbers I mentioned that can come from the associated gas potential. All this gas put together, we see an opportunity to be exporting consistently you know, 250 to 300 million standard cubic feet a day of gas from Jubilee and 10 combined associated and non-associated gas for the foreseeable future, at least till the end of the agreements on Jubilee and 10, but even likely have the potential to do it for longer. So we'll do that and we're very excited about it. And the part that we're most excited about is under any cost for that gas, uh, it will by far be the least, the least costly gas available to the nation from any source, domestic or foreign. And we're, of course, proud that it will be domestic. So it will be the lowest cost gas available from any source, domestic or foreign. So all of that is benefit to the nation, benefit to the uh, Ghanaian population, and benefit to the, to the economic growth and strength of Ghana. That'll be it for Business Live. For more news, please log on to myjoyonline.com. It's been great coming your way. I'm Charles Aite. Many thanks for watching. Enjoy the, enjoy the rest of our programs as well.